So you want to look at the text and you want to be able to, to look at it in a way that you can be able to understand it and so that it doesn't become uh, tough because it becomes so familiar. One of the hard problems of observation is that it becomes so familiar. The text that we're looking at becomes so familiar. So what are some uh, techniques that we can use so that the word becomes alive, becomes fresh to us so that we can begin to go, oh, that's important. Oh, and, and that's important too. And oh, I see those connections now. I want to help you do that. And to do that, we're going to look at how to observe the text graphically. This is a way that uh, you do something to the text so you can see it better. I've got four different ways that I do this here. And maybe you've got another way or a couple of other ways to do that. But I've got four main ways that I do this myself. And so let's kind of go through these to see that here's how you can help yourself observe the text. So number one is to just get a Bible and a pencil or some pens or some markers or some crayons or whatever it is and just highlight things and notice things and scribble around things. That's to me is, is pretty helpful to do because um, if you're reading a particular part of the text and you notice something that keeps repeating like a particular word or a phrase or like a sequence of actions, you can write that out in the margins. You can highlight it, mark it out, and then go and look at your text and go, oh, there's all those connections. And now I can do something with those connections or I can work on as far as the interpretation stages. I can, I can go beyond just seeing what's there. So that's really cool. And a lot of people get really into um, writing all kinds of cool notes in their margins or using all these kinds of symbols to study the scriptures. And I say, go for it, you know, use as much of that kind of stuff as you want. But don't be afraid to just think, you know, even just using a single pencil and the Bible, you can actually get a lot done as far as different symbols you can create. You can circle sections. You can use a squiggly line in the margin. Um, you can use boxes around words. You can just underline words. Uh, you can get really creative that way as far as just using a, pe a pencil and a Bible. So I encourage you to use it any way you can and uh, come with your own system. Uh, there's a lot of stuff like that on YouTube as far as coming up with your own systems and how to mark up your Bible. But that's really like the main that I see people using, uh, the way that the main way people interact with scripture. The second thing you can do is um, getting a word editor, printing, that, printing the text you're gonna be studying off. So it could be something as a single chapter, several verses, or a verse you can print off and then just lay it out for you to study with. Now, I've done this a number of different ways. I've printed things off and studied them. So, um, for instance, I've you know taken out a legal size of paper, so 8 by 14, and I've had the, my text right in front of me with a bunch of dot grid around the text, so I've got a lot of fat margins to work with. And I'll just take different... Um, you know, I'll make maybe like footnotes as I'm writing or I'll use different colors as I'm marking it up. But I've got a big page with a text with lots of room between the text, with lots of spacing between the verses. That way, I've got a lot of space to work with and I can just make a big mess of observation and then I can begin to make some sense of it after I've done all of that. So I like doing that as well. And I've done a lot more of that uh earlier in, in studying the Bible and I've changed it. I've, the last one that I'm going to show you is really what I do now. Um, but that is one way that um that's worth doing though is to just find the text you're using print it off and you know don't be afraid and i've done this um to create the entire book whatever book you're studying and make it into a little booklet that you can print off and, and make it i've used these uh this note binding system called arc arc notebooks which is what staples puts out but i think hobby lobby has their own version and uh just it's a disc bound notebook is really what it is and so I've made that as far as you, and what's great about this sort of uh, series is that let's say you want to insert a page in between a chapter of your studying. Well, you can do that with this system easily enough and you can arrange things however you want to. And I really appreciate about this particular system. So uh, don't be afraid um, to even just go as far as I'm going to print out the entire book of Job, like what I did when I was studying the book of Job and just get into the text. And uh, there's my, there's my nice little copy of the book of Job that I can, I can use and look back on. So there's one way, print it out. Uh, the third way is kind of a hybrid between the first two is that you're not necessarily printing it out, but you also are marking it up. And that is this new way of doing it. And I only think Crossway is really at the forefront of like studying Bibles, not study Bibles, although they do a lot of study Bibles, but studying Bibles. So like the ESV journaling Bible, the 
I think they have an inductive Bible, the interleaved Bible, which was really cool. And I want to grab one, but I'm just like, nah, I just, nah, I don't think I'm going to get one. But I really like that one in particular. Um, so there's, there's this way, and uh, it's this one called the ESV Digital PDF. And so this is just the Bible in PDF format. So you have good margins, and you can like um, maximize and minimize the screen so you can make really tiny notes. And if you want to look at the notes, you can zoom in and, and zoom out to kind of see how it works. So this is a great way of studying, especially if you know, you're a minimalist or you don't want to bring a lot of things around when you study the Bible. Just have your iPad or have your tablet or your computer and make notes as you're studying the scriptures. This to me seems like a really good option for people who um, are, you know, want to study the Bible more on the go and uh, have an iPad that they really, really enjoy using. So don't be afraid to use. Th so I encourage you to look into that one. I think it's a, actually not a, a bad, not a bad price on, on purchasing that. The last one, this is how I do it. And this is how I typically show people how I'm studying the Bible because it works for me the best. And I've used all the other ones, but this one so far is the one that I think works the best uh, for me. And that's because um, it grants you a lot of freedom with the Bible. And it can become a little bit dangerous because you might like delete verses or all that stuff. But what I've found is that, so there's this version of the Bible called the Web Bible. And the Web Bible, the World English Bible, is a public domain Bible, meaning there is no copyright. So I can actually print it off if I wanted to, and I could I could potentially sell just the Bible itself and print it off, whatever, and that would be completely fine. You know, that's I, that would be my right to do that. I couldn't do that with the ESV, the King James. I, some of them even have really restrictions on what you use, even your study materials, that you have to ask permission and get some sort of... Um, you know, tell them how often you sell, how many booklets you sell, and you can't be more than X amount of the percentage of the entire book that you're using. So there's a lot of copyright issues that go along with copying and pasting the Bible. For personal use, I don't think you get in much trouble with it, but uh, anything beyond that, they're really going to get you with. So I wanted to work with a Bible that I could just use anytime I wanted to. So I've got ideas of maybe making my own uh, study booklets and stuff that I want to uh, put up for, for sale if people want to want to use those in their own particular studies. I've thought about those sorts of things, and I wanted to be able to not worry about copyright and stuff. So I'm using the World English Bible, which is based off, I believe, the American Standard Bible. And so I've got that in plain text format, which is you know your old WordPad note, uh, notepad uh, file, so a .txt file. I converted those into this other format called org format that I use with this program called Emacs. And that allows me to mess around with the text. Now, you don't have to use Emacs. And in fact, unless you're already an Emacs user, I highly suggest you don't use Emacs. If you're somebody who likes to get dirty with um, you know, technology and learn how to copy and paste different codes into your uh, configuration system, then, then go for it. You know, learn Emacs. You know, I, I, I love it. I, this is so fun to use. And here's a little bit of a demo of what that looks like. What I'm doing right here is I'm opening up a different uh, windows. If you, They're almost like tabs, but they're different windows. And I've got my different themes that I'm working with. And inside of these different themes, I am adding and um, I am reading the, you know, the Gospel of Luke here. And I'm going, okay, there's this theme here. And I'm going to link this note to this chapter of the chapter one of Luke. And I'm going to link the chapter... Uh, to the note and the notes of the chapter. So I've got double links there so I can go back and forth easily enough to, to, to look at those notes there. And what this allows you to do is, is you can take a text and you can adjust it. And what I can do even is I can um, uh, highlight it so I can change the color of the text or make it bold or make it italic. Or I can even move it around and, and offset it so I can read a little bit better. I love doing that because it really helps me visualize the text a lot better. You know, writing it down and using a PDF version might, was, I think, it's, it's a really cool idea. Use pens and pencils is great too. Uh, this, to me, is much faster. It's more intuitive, and I get a lot out of it when I'm doing it. So I uh, would encourage you to jump into it now. Emacs, obviously, uh, pretty, uh, pretty steep learning curve to use. It's an old uh, text editing uh, thing for like coders and such. So, you know. Don't jump into that unless you really know what you're doing or willing to spend a couple of weeks or months learning how to use. 
But there's some other software out there that I find very fascinating. So like Joplin Notes, which is like a nice open source version of uh, writing notes down. But my favorite one right now, at least, is Obsidian. Obsidian is the Markdown Notes, and you can take those Markdown Notes and very simply create notes and links and back and forth. That's really what the program is for, is for creating notes stuff. And it only uses Markdown files. So it doesn't create its own proprietary format of files like maybe an Apple Notes would make or something similar would make or even Notion would make. But although Notion allows you to export it to the Markdown format. This is a great way to uh, do it. And so this is what I'm doing. But Obsidian would be one to look at and um, jump into as far as making different notes on that front there. So. My question now is, what is the way that you interact with the text? You know, is it somebody who marks it up or do you have a particular system? Do you have a video that's been your inspiration for writing things up? Um, I've come, you know, I've tried different things out, but I'm, I'm sure that there's new ways that I haven't figured out, I haven't looked at as far as looking at the Bible. So if you've got a system, you know, be sure to post it below and uh, share it with everyone else who wants to come along and learn how to better understand and observe the scriptures graphically so that we can um, learn a little bit more. I appreciate you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.